Hey, my name is Stefan from Red Slacklines and today I'd like to talk to you about an incident that happened some weeks ago in Belgium. Some Highlanders managed to break their mainline webbing while sessioning on it and in this video I'd like to discuss the details of how this could happen and how we can prevent this in the future. Here's how the line was rigged. They had an 80 meters line rigged on dynamite main webbing with a Dura Vida loop in the center. And they had a Parsec backup connected with a quick link to the Dura Vida loop and attached to the anchors. The static side of the main webbing was a sewn loop and the tensioning side was attached to a Lynx forward block and tied back with an anti-slippage knot. Before the incident happened, the crew had four sessions on the line already. So due to the non-existent anti-slippage mitigation in the web lock, they had quite some slippage of the main webbing, which led to a really saggy line. They described the line as really saggy and they also described their leash falls as very hard but not painful yet. For the fifth session, one Highliner decided to get on the line with a unicycle. So he decided to tie his leash a bit longer. And of course he stood a bit higher because he was on the unicycle. And when he took his first whipper into the leash, the crew at the tensioning side heard a loud kind of metallic noise, which they couldn't really locate. They checked the rig, but couldn't find any source of the sound, so they suggested this might have been a shackle that just dangled onto a tree or something like this. They told the Highliner with the unicycle everything's fine, so he continued sessioning. He had a second whipper into the leash and during his second whipper the main line broke in the weblock. Nothing serious happened during this main line failure. The Highliner got caught by the backup. So the good news about this incident is now we know for sure Dur La Vida works. Dur La Vida and the Parsec backup saved the life of this Highliner. After hearing about this incident, we got in contact with the Highline crew. We also got in contact with the ISA to investigate how this incident could happen and to educate the whole community about how to prevent such failures in the future. Here's what the ISA, the Highland crew and we at Red Slacklines think what led to this failure and how we can prevent it in the future. The webbing was tied off in the weblock with a three times wrap of the tail around the weblock and a simple uh, hitch at the end. Um, this tie-off did not mitigate the slipping of the Dyneema webbing. So during every leash fall the webbing slipped a bit, which led to a really saggy line as the Highland crew described it. Second, they used a really low stretch webbing, the Dynamite webbing, and the leash falls into a dynamite webbing of this length are really hard. In tests that we conducted at Red Slacklines in 2020, we measured about 8 kN of anchor peak forces during a simple leash fall in a 100 meter line. Third, the unicyclist stood a bit higher and had a longer leash, so the overall force of falling into the leash was much higher than a simple leash fall from walking. As you can see in this picture, the webbing's tail got sucked into the main diverter, but before it got sucked into the diverter, it was folded in half. This folding appeared due to the anti-slippage tie-back. It was a knot and in this knot the webbing was just 
tied together so it was folded there and this folded part was sucked into the diverter of the weblock. This led to a massive misalignment of the mainline webbing's fibers. You can see in the picture how the fibers are in a like 45 degrees angle towards the side plates where they usually should be in a 90 degrees angle towards the side plates. This strange misalignment is a massive stress raiser to the fibers of the webbing. So we assume from the pictures that only one third of the main webbing carried the load of the whippers and the rest, the two thirds of the webbing, were completely unloaded, which led to a ripping of the one third of the fibers during the first leash fall, which might explain the strange noise the Highline crew at the anchor heard. We assume that the rest of the webbing, since it was already ripped, ripped during the second leash fall, so the main line failed fully in two stages. One stage was one third of the webbing with a strange noise the Highline crew heard and the rest was during the second leash fall so the Highline completely failed. Our highest priority at Red Slacklines is to make slacklining and highlining as safe as possible for you. So here's how we think we can learn from this and how we can mitigate such risks in the future. First, the Highline was uh, rigged on dynamite webbing, which is an extremely low stretch webbing. The line was only 80 meters long. The minimum recommended length of high-tech webbings by the ISA is at about 150 to 200 meters to mitigate peak loads at the anchors. If you'd like to rig a high-tech webbing in a shorter line, we highly recommend to add a piece of nylon webbing, 5 or 10 meters will be enough, in between your high-tech webbing and the static anchor to add a bit more stretch to lower the peak forces. In tests that we conducted at Red Slacklines, we could measure that the peak forces in a 100 meter high-tech line went down from 8 kN to about 4.5 kN, so this really lowers peak forces at the anchor. Second, to mitigate high peak loads at the anchors, it is important to retention your line from time to time. The steeper the angle of the line, the higher the forces at the anchors during a leash fall. Third, and maybe most important, please use your gear according to the manufacturer's recommendations. We recommend the use of dynamite webbing in combination with our red rig lock. The rig lock has a second stage web lock integrated, which prevents slippage of the webbing up to 16 kN. Fourth, if you or your crew realize any kind of strange behavior of a setup, like kind of strange noises that you don't know the source of, please get off the line and check your whole rig. Please also open all knots and check what's going on below those knots. We believe that the tieback prevented the crew from realizing what's going on with the webbing inside of the weblock. So in this case, please open your tiebacks, check if everything's all right, and only if you are sure everything's 100% safe, you can continue sessioning. Fifth, and maybe the most important point, the Highliner got caught by his fully functional backup. His life was saved by his backup connected to the Dura La Vida in the main webbing. Please be aware, mainline failures happen, they happen regularly. The ISA knows about nearly 30 mainline failures during the last years. Mainline failures are not a myth, they happen, they happen regularly. Please use a fully functional backup in every single one of your Highline setups. In conclusion, we at Red Slacklines are really happy nothing serious happened and nobody got injured during this incident. We learned a lot about the risks and how to mitigate such risks in the future. We hope you also learned a lot from this. The only thing that's left for me to say is stay safe, enjoy your lines and keep the balance.